This is WKYT This Morning. Rise and shine. Good morning, everybody, and happy Wednesday. I'm Andrea Walker. A little lilt in the voice there. Here we are. <laughs> I'm Bill Bryant. It's so good to have you with us. Here we are Wednesday, September 28th. It's early. We already have a lot going on. Now at 6, we're tracking breaking news in Scott County, where police are working a deadly crash. UK fans are claiming their spot as they camp out for tickets to Big Blue Madness. This just happening minutes ago. We'll check out the crowd. And here's a good one. Find out how you can get free groceries today at a new store opening in Lexington. And there must be a little rain to go along with the, the beautiful weather we've really yeah. had, you know, yeah. here lately. And we do have some rain. For a lot of those camping out, a lot of those that haven't left to go camp out <laughs> and set up their tent, we do have some rain on the way. Now, it's not this morning. It's mainly this afternoon off into the evening hours. And then you'll have more chances on Thursday, more chances on Friday, and even more chances um, for your parts of Saturday. So it's not going to be a good looking weather pattern the next few days. There's the Fender Radar Network that rains to the north of us. That rain to the north, though, is moving northeast. The system's tracking south, but the rain to the northeast of us is moving northeast. So we're not going to expect it anytime soon. It actually comes later on today. 40s and 50s outside right now, and then we track towards your afternoon. And it looks like we're going to have uh, some rain there in the forecast. We'll go over that coming up in a few minutes. Okay, we'll see you shortly, Micah. Thank you. We begin with the WKYT News breaking news alert. Police in Scott County are now at the scene of a deadly crash. We just got word about an hour ago about this. The crash happened near Stamping Ground. WKYT's Michelle Chamberlain is at the alert desk with the very le latest details. Good morning. Good morning. We just spoke with the Scott County coroner, and he confirms that one person is dead following this early morning crash. Now, this crash is in the Scott County area near Stamping Ground on Woodlake Road near P. Ridge Road. We're told it's close to the Franklin County line. Now, the coroner said only one truck was involved in the crash. He says there were three people inside the truck at the time of this crash. And here's a look at the scene this morning. We're told the driver was traveling westbound on Woodlake, drove off the road, and threw a fence. Now, the male driver was pronounced dead at the scene. We're told the two other passengers were taken to the hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. We don't have any information on their conditions at this time, and we also don't know what caused the crash this morning. Now, the right lane of Woodlake is closed. Police are directing traffic. We, we are told traffic is moving along in the area this morning. We'll be sure to keep you updated on this crash throughout the morning. Bill? All right, uh, very sad to start to the day. Thank you very much, Michelle. A Lexington couple says they are fed up after a rash of crimes targeting their neighborhood. Overnight, they say a group of teenagers threw a weed eater uh, through a window at their home on Kennesaw Drive. The homeowner gave us this surveillance video that helped police catch three teenage suspects. The owner says this is not the first time something like this has happened. Police say the teens were charged with criminal mischief and have been turned over to their parents. Well, some frightening moments for a Lexington father this morning. He says a stranger climbed through a window and into his toddler's bedroom. It happened just after 2 this morning on Dalton Court. Police say the father confronted the intruder who said he was looking for someone. When he didn't find that person, police say the man walked out the front door. They have a vague description of the man and took a burglary report. A teenager has died after being injured in a Russell County crash. 19-year-old Logan Hudson died at UK Hospital. Police say Hudson's SUV was hit by another SUV on Highway 379 near Russell Springs Monday morning. Police say two others were injured but have been released from the hospital. Three crashes on the Mountain Parkway in Powell County have killed four people in just a matter of a week. The latest happened yesterday near Clay City. Police say the car had a tire blowout causing the crash. A man and woman inside the car were killed. That crash was just a few miles from the scene of another deadly crash over the weekend. Surveillance video has caught two burglars in the act inside a Perry County restaurant. Hazard police say two men broke into the Lee's famous recipe on East Main Street. The video shows them heading straight for a safe under a counter. Police say the burglar stole around $300. They also walked by an open cash register without taking anything from it. Police say the burglars were in and out of the restaurant in about one minute. 75 pounds of marijuana has been taken off the streets in Russell County. The sheriff sent us this picture. He says the drug bust was part of a joint investigation with state police. Deputies have arrested David Lopez of Russell Springs, and he is charged with trafficking in marijuana. 
Well, a new grocery store targeting healthy eaters will open in Lexington today. Fresh Time Farmers Market will open on East Reynolds Road. The store features local products and produce. There will be a grand opening ceremony at 7 this morning. Store managers say the first 250 customers in line will get a free bag of healthy groceries. So that sounds like a good deal. <laughs> right. Uh, the price is right on that mm, one, right? Sure is. Okay, it's uh, been a bit of a chilly start to today, but there are hundreds of UK basketball fans who are not worried at all about that weather. Nothing could stop <laughs> them. They're now camping out in the official line to get Big Blue Madness tickets. Those tickets won't be handed out until Friday night. So, do fans plan on pa how are they going to pass the time? Lauren Miner is joining us live. She's been talking to fans all morning. Lauren, what do you know? You know, there are a lot of upbeat, excited fans for it being 6 o'clock in the morning, and I absolutely love it. It's such a great atmosphere out here. There are hundreds of people camped out right now in front of Memorial Coliseum. Fans made the mad dash across the street about an hour ago. Fans have their tents, chairs, snacks, and most importantly, blankets, because they're going to need to stay warm. They're going to be camped out here till Friday at 10 p.m. Now, some fans started camping even before that, just waiting to get their spot in line for for Big Blue Madness tickets. This is something Wildcat fans have been doing for years, but they are going, there are going rather to be some important changes this year we want you to know about. In past years, campers' tents would surround Memorial Coliseum. This year, though, the west side of the building will be off limits to campers because of construction. Part of the reason being the construction right across Avenue of Champions. We have been talking to some fans all morning long, some who came up with a few good strategies to get their spot. We had a good game plan. We uh, we had some boxing out going on, you know. So uh, getting some lessons from Cal Perry. Some boxing out. That's a pretty good strategy, and I've heard a couple other strategies too. But hey, if you couldn't make it out here this morning, tickets will be on sale at Ticketmaster.com starting at 10 p.m. on Friday. And Big Blue Madness is October 14th, starting at 7 p.m. So don't miss that. Reporting live in Lexington, Lauren Miner, WKYT. All right, they're in it for the long haul this they week, are. you know? Yeah, and another way to pass the time maybe later this afternoon will be dancing in the rain because right. it's on the way. <laughs> we'll take a little nap over there, you know, and uh, what's yeah. going to be happening. Let's check in with meteorologist Micah Harris. He's in our first alert weather center. Yeah, it looks good for him now. And, and everything, everybody's happy and, and lucky go at it early this morning there for those tents. But let me tell you this those tents better be waterproof because some rain's on the way and you could get some really heavy downpours with some gusty winds as the system drops southbound. So just keep that in mind. If you're heading out there to maybe help out a friend, family member, or set up a tent of your own, just know that. Here come some showers and thunderstorms. They'll arrive here in Lexington, I'd say, anywhere from 1 p.m. to about 3 p.m. That's your best bet. But there's your look as we go through the day. Now, we'll spike up right around noontime, right around 72 degrees, depending on where you are. But then the rain moves in, and this is a cold air system. I mean, we have some pretty chilly air in place. So once the rain starts, it's going to drop our temperatures big time. Uh, we'll be there in the low to mid 60s later on this afternoon, off into the evening, with those showers and thunderstorms on the increase. And here's the timing on it, okay? Let me break it down for you. If you're going to see a graphic uh, here through my weather forecast before you take off today, this is probably the one you want to see to when the rain arrives. So noon to 3 p.m., that's central, including Lexington. Go northbound toward Cincinnati and go westbound toward Louisville. That's the best bet, and maybe even the BG Parkway from noon to 3 p.m. Then you track southbound, okay? That's where you're going to be looking at 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. That will go for roughly around the BG Parkway. Uh, 150 corridor going through Danville and Boyle County. Go down 68 all the way to my friends in Marion, Taylor County, and down toward the Cumberland region. Central zones, it's really southern portion of the central zones. You go into Richmond, go into Berea, Waco, and make your way down 64 all the way to Moorhead, even parts of the Mountain Parkway. That's 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. Then you're talking about 8 p.m. to midnight. Southeast, you guys will have a really, really nice day in store. You'll love today. Once you hit the evening hours, really late afternoon off into the evening hours, you start to feel that rain slide on in. So that's the timing on it for now, for today. Tomorrow, still some spotty showers left over and a couple of rumbles of thunder. High school football goes for that day, too. So we're really not seeing a big shot 
had uh, some extremely heavy rain, but it's just widespread rain for the next three days, guys. That's what we're going to be dealing with. That's what we're going to be paying attention to as we go throughout the next three days. Pretty sloppy weather. <laughs> it's not good for a lot of those tent goers and a lot of those right. people heading down to Big Blue Madness tickets. But, we yeah. always feel sorry for Mike when he has to deliver I know. <laughs> news like that. Cause Prepare for the, the dirty way. looks yeah. out. Yeah, yeah. I know. It's not yeah. your fault. It's all right. It's Just not the your messenger, fault. all right? Yeah, you're right. <laughs> Keep that in mind. Uh, coming up on 610 on W. KYT this morning. And each morning we bring you weather and traffic together. We do it right here. Let's see what's going on out there at the moment. Uh, first of all, this morning we're going to look at the Lexington Fayette Urban County Government Live Drive Camera at Nicholasville and Alumni. Um, of course, on that end of, of alumni, and as you can see, joggers out this morning, walkers, and, uh, good for and them. some lively traffic. Uh, people being active. That's Getting good. at it. Yeah. No reports of any problems right now. Uh, of course, we are staying on top of the situation in Scott County, near the Franklin County line, uh, where there was the fatal accident uh, earlier this morning, uh, quite unfortunately. So, yeah, uh, hard way to start details. the day. It is. All right, more news is coming up on WKYT here on your Wednesday. It's so good to have you right here. Silicon protests overnight in San. San Diego suburb after a black man was shot and killed by police. And colonizing Mars? One businessman is already working on that, and he thinks it could be soon, at least uh, for most Americans, more affordable. That's coming up. Welcome back into WKYT this morning on your Wednesday at 614 right now. Well, a black man shot several times by officers in a San Diego suburb has died. El Cajun police say the man did not have a gun. He pulled an object from his pocket and pointed it toward two officers. That's when one of the officers shot him. The other officer had been trying to take control of the man with a stun gun. The department has released a cell phone picture of the moment before the shooting. The shooting has set off protests at the scene alleging police racism. Charlotte Police Headquarters reopened this morning after a suspicious package led to an evacuation at the site. Police say a robot later removed the package and it was taken to a remote area to be investigated. There's no word yet on what was inside the package. This comes a week after Charlotte police shot and killed a black man, Keith Scott, which led to protests in the city. An Afghan official says at least 13 civilians have been killed in an airstrike that hit a house. Local leaders there say they think Islamic State group loyalists were the target. A spokesman for the U.S. military in Afghanistan confirms a counter terrorism airstrike this morning. He is saying that allegations of civilian casualties, though, are being looked into. Former Israeli President Shimon Peres has died. Peres was one of Israel's most admired leaders and the last surviving link to Israel's founding fathers. He's credited with creating the country's nuclear arsenal in the 1950s and guiding a skeptical nation into peace talks with the Palestinians in the 1990s. Perez earned the Nobel Peace Prize for his key role in those negotiations. His condition worsened following a major stroke two weeks ago. Shimon Perez was 93 years old. Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump are back in campaign mode. Just six weeks left till the election. Clinton campaigns with Bernie Sanders in New Hampshire for the second time ever today, while Trump rallies support in Illinois, Iowa, and Wisconsin. Both candidates are claiming victory after going head to head in a record setting presidential debate on Monday. And speaking of Trump, a driver in Washington state has learned that the Donald won't help you get a ride in the carpool lane. Take a look at this giant cardboard cutout of the Republican presidential nominee's head. The Washington State Patrol says someone tried to use the HOV lane of a state highway with Trump's head as the passenger, but a state trooper didn't fall for it, and the driver was quickly pulled over. There could definitely be a distraction there. <laughs> really? I mean... <laughs> Uh, you would say nice try, but uh, not really, right? 617 is our time on WKYT this morning. Wells Fargo CEO John Stumpf is forfeiting $41 million in stock awards. He's also giving up his yearly salary and bonus while the bank's directors conduct an independent investigation into millions of fake accounts. Wells Fargo also says the head of the retail banking division won't get any severance or stock awards in connection with her recent retirement. Tyson Foods recalling more than 132,000 pounds of chicken nuggets. The recall affects five-pound bags of fully cooked panko chicken nuggets sold at Costco stores around the country. Tyson says a small number of customers reported finding small pieces of plastic in the chicken. 
No injuries have been reported. Tyson says it issued the recall out of an abundance of caution. Also, Budweiser maker Anheuser-Busch InBev's $100 billion takeover of SAB Miller has cleared its first financial hurdle. Investors approve plans to merge the world's two biggest brewers. Acquiring SAB Miller gives AB InBev a large presence in Africa while increasing its business in South America and Europe. The company combined will control almost a third of the global beer market. And it turns out you can put a price tag on a good laugh. According to Forbes magazine, funny man Kevin Hart made $87.5 million in the last year, and he is the highest paid comedian. Jerry Seinfeld came in second, earning $43.5 million. And rounding out the top three, ventriloquist Terry Fader with $21 million. Nobody with a bad paycheck if you make people laugh, huh? There you go. People pay good money for <laughs> a good did. laugh. Well, WKYT this morning, we are just getting started. Run, Forrest, run. A newlywed couple gets a big surprise while taking pictures in Central Park. You can see the hour-by-hour -hour forecast on settled weather later on this afternoon. Here's a look at 6 p.m. I'll show you when it arrives uh, around your house coming up in just a few minutes. Welcome back in. The time now is 622 on your Wednesday. One person is dead, two others injured after a crash in Scott County. That's what's trending at this hour on WKYT News. This morning's crash was near Stamping Ground on Wood Lake Road near Pea Ridge Road. All three people were in the same vehicle. Traffic is moving again in that area. A funeral will be held Friday for former Israeli President and Prime Minister Shimon Peres, who died at the age of 93. Dignitaries from around the world are expected to attend, including President Obama and Bill and Hillary Clinton. And UK basketball fans made that mad dash across Avenue of Champions this morning. They're now in the official Big Blue Madness ticket line. The tickets are going to be handed out on Friday night, so they'll be camping out until then. They are excited. And Micah says this afternoon they may be dealing with some rain that's going to be tracking us uh, in through the area. Yeah, they're not going to be so excited later on this afternoon. I would say the rain arrives around Lexington for you guys heading out there, maybe uh, helping out some friends, some family members there with those tents. You better lock them down because this system, when it rolls on in, it'll give us gusty showers and thunderstorms. So you'll have some pretty strong winds and you'll get some rain rolling on in here. So that's. Something to keep in mind. It's not going to look all that good. Anywhere from 1 to 3 p.m. is when you can expect that. Frankfurt, we're coming in at 56. That goes for Lexington, too. You work your way southbound, and that's where we've had clearing of the skies really all night long. So we're at 46 right now in London. Actually, it feels pretty nice in the central northern zone. Southern zone, it's a little cool this morning, but mainly dry during the morning hours. We get toward lunchtime if you're heading out to lunch. If you have any plans, lunch break. Typically, take a work, uh, walk around work. There's only a slight chance of rain. Most will be dry during that time. It's after that that we start to see the bulk of the rain move on in with a few showers, few rumbles of thunder as the kids are coming home from school and you coming home from work. Focus of the forecast, obviously, is the rain the next few days. I'll show you how much we're expecting if we have any severe weather threat and also looking toward that weekend. That's coming up. All right, Micah, thank you. 624 right now. Well, SpaceX founder Elon Musk envisions a thousand passenger ships flying in mass to Mars within a century. <laughs> Battlestar Galactica style. Musk recently outlined his big plan to establish a city on Mars. He wants to make humans a multi-planetary species. And he says the best way to do that is to colonize the red planet. In fact, he's already started work on the Mars colonial fleet. Musk's goal is to get the price down so that anybody can afford to go with a ticket costing no more than a house here on Earth. Well, there we'll you go. See. <laughs> I want him to perfect that vehicle before, yes, please. <laughs> before making yes, that trip. Please. All right, a just married New York couple had starry eyes for more than one reason. Tom Hanks jogged right through their photo shoot in Central Park. This is so cool. The actor congratulated the newlyweds and stuck around to take a few pictures. He even offered to officiate the couple's ceremony. Get this, he is an ordained minister. Of course he is. The couple had already tied the knot, but apparently this isn't Hank's first wedding crash. Back in 1993, while filming Forrest Gump, the actor crashed a South Carolina wedding shoot as well. So he's making a habit out of just crashing people's weddings. Well, it had to be fun uh, Cute for them. Cute picture. Certainly. And, uh, yeah, yeah. He's so a, cool. <laughs> yeah, that's going to be a memorable moment for them. Definitely, no doubt about it. definitely. Well, when WKYT returns this morning, a central Kentucky city is overrun with cats. Here from 
one woman who's taken upon herself to take care of them and find out how the city is taking care of the issue. Yeah, that's coming up at 635. We'll have that for you. Our top stories are on the way here in just a couple of minutes. Tonight's Powerball jackpot is $60 million, and Friday night's Mega Millions jackpot is $30 million. Keep it here on WKYT.